This lesson is over spheres and composite figures. So we will be talking about the surface area and volume of spheres, um, and that is the shape of a ball, and the uh, volume of composite figures. So here is the formulas for the surface area and the volume for a sphere. Um, a couple things to make sure you realize, this is R squared and this is R to the third, because a lot of times if you just look at this, you think, oh, the surface area is four pi R squared, and then you just divide that by three to get your volume, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, and we can remember this because the surface area is an area, so your units are always squared, um, and this is a volume, so your units are always to the third. Second thing, just like we talked about with the um, volume of cones and cylinders, um, if you want to type this out in your calculator, if you can type in four divided by three, um, or if, sorry, if you can type in the fraction four over three in your calculator, uh, you can do it this first way. Um, you can also do four divided by three and put in parentheses, but I think it's going to be easier to use this method. Do four pi r to the third and then take that answer divided by three. Um, and actually, again, if you just put four pi r to the third divided by three, it should do it right, but I like to do it in two steps. Um, so again, a lot of times in textbooks it'll say this, your formula sheet will have this one on there, but I will also add this to your formula sheet. <clears throat> so find the surface area and the volume of each one of these. Um, so the surface area is four, sorry, four pi r squared. The volume is four pi r to the third divided by three. Make sure we have those right. And again, especially with these that are similar, I like to write those out at the very beginning just to make sure I have those. Um, so the good news with a sphere is that there's only one variable. The only variable is the radius because there's no height because the radius would be here, 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 coming out at you, coming down to the bottom. All those are the radius. So just plug those in. We have four times pi times 6.5 squared. Again, the good news is you can just type that in your calculator. Four times pi times 6.5 squared is 530.929, which is 530.93. Again, it doesn't say this, but I like to round to two decimal places. Um, and this is meters squared. This is still an area. So that's meters squared. Uh, the other one, do the same thing. We have pi. Sorry, 4 times pi times the radius is 6.5 to the third divided by 3. Again, I like to do this in two steps. 4 times pi times 6.5 raised to the third. That is 3451.04 when you round divided by 3. The volume is 1150.35. Um, and that would be meters cubed. That volume is cubed. So that's really all there is to spheres, just plugging in your radius for those. Now this one you have to be careful because this one's not a radius. This is your diameter. The line goes all the way through. So you have to remember if your diameter is 7.7, .7, then your radius is that divided by 2. So your radius is 3.85. And now that's what we're plugging in. So we have 4 times pi times 3.85 squared. So 4 times pi times 3.85 squared is 186.27 when you round. Again, that's feet squared since it's a surface area. And then the volume, 4 pi r to the third divided by 3. Sorry about that, Bell. Uh, and again, I guess I could have done this. Our radius is 3.85. 3.85 to the third. So again, just type that in your calculator. 4 times pi times 3.85 raised to the third. That is 717.12, and then divide that by 3. Don't forget to divide by 3. I know that's going to happen to me at a certain point. Make sure it doesn't happen to you on the test. Then that is feet to the third.
So go ahead and do this one on your own. Um, so again, if I were you, I'd pause it, do it on my own, and then you can hit play. You can even fast forward a little bit to see if you got the right answer. And if you got the right answer, you can skip these couple minutes. But if you didn't, please watch it to make sure you know what you did different or know what you did wrong. So the radius is 18. That's good. So the surface area is 4 times pi times 18 squared. 4 times pi times 18 squared. Surface area is 4071.50 centimeters squared. And the volume is 4 pi times radius to the third divided by 3. And again, make sure you're doing it to the third. Um, and our radius is 18. I can go ahead and plug that in. So 4 times pi times 18 raised to the third is 73287.07, and then that divided by 3. Don't forget to divide by 3. So the volume is 24429.02 centimeters cubed. Bring that room a little bit. So those shouldn't take very long. Again, it's just plugging numbers into a formula. You get to use your calculator. Um, again, when I was in high school, when I got to a problem, um, when we got to the surface area and volume of a sphere, um, it almost put me over the edge because it's a lot of formulas to memorize. But remember, you're not memorizing them. I'm giving you those formulas. So this should be some easier problems. I think it helps that there's only one variable. So let's look at this story problem. A basketball has a diameter of 9.8 or sorry, 9.5 inches, I want to pull a prank on one of my friends. I'm going to fill a basketball with water and then throw it to him. Uh, that way, when he catches it, he will not expect it to weigh a lot, and there will be undoubtedly a hilarious outcome. How much water would fit in the basketball? So the basketball is a sphere. Um, you can obviously just make it a circle, but that's kind of how they make that look a little bit more 3D-ish. Um, and the radius, uh, the diameter is nine, so the radius is 9.5 divided by two. Sorry, I should say the diameter is 9.5. The radius is 9.5 divided by two. And that is 4.75. So if that's your radius, um, it says how much water will fit in the basketball. So we're looking for the volume. We're not looking for the surface area. Um, again, a good analogy would be the surface area would be if you paint the basketball. If you took the paint and filled the whole basketball with paint, that's the volume. If you're filling it with a liquid, um, that's the volume. If you're just covering it with something, that's surface area. So the volume is 4 times pi times radius to the third divided by 3. That's 4 times pi times 7, or sorry, 4.75 to the third divided by 3. And again, now it's just a calculator problem. 4 times pi times 4.75 raised to the third divided by 3. So that ends up being 1346.76. Then we divide that by 3. That gives us 448.92 inches to the third. That's how much water you'd have to fill that up with. Um, now you could also make this a little bit more difficult. We could convert that then. If you wanted to convert that to ounces, you could see how many ounces would fit in a basketball or how many gallons would fit in the basketball. Once you have inches cubed, that'd be an easy conversion. So our objective is students to be able to find the volume and surface area. We did that, find the volume in the surface area. Now we're going to look at composite figures. So remember from before, if we had a shape like this, the way we found the area was we found the area of this part first, then we found the area of this part, and we just added those together. So it's similar to what we're going to do now, except for now it's three-dimensional. We're doing it with volume, so we're just adding those together. Um, so a composite space figure is a three-dimensional figure that is a combination of two or more simpler figures. Uh, you can find the volume of a com composite space figure by adding the volumes of the figures that are combined. So again, it's the same thing we did with areas, except for now we're doing it with volume. 
So this is one of the story problems from the textbook. What is the approximate volume of the bullnose aquarium rounded two decimal places? Um, so um, bullnose aquarium just means it's got that round hemisphere on the end. So we're going to break this down into two shapes we know, a rectangular prism and a cylinder, but it's only half of a cylinder. So keep that in mind. We need to make sure we remember that. So what's the approximate uh, volume of that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is find the volume of the prism. Remember the volume of the prism, the, uh, you could do base times height, or that's the same thing as length times width times height. You'll have both of those formulas. Um, so the volume would be 24 times 24 times 36. 24 times 24 times 36 is 20736 inches cubed. So that is the volume of the prism, but we still need the volume of the cylinder. And again, it's a half cylinder. So the half cylinder, I feel like I spelled that wrong, but that's okay. Um, so if it was just a normal cylinder, the volume for a cylinder, remember, is pi r squared times the height. Um, the radius is 12, it lists here, so pi times 12 squared times the height is 24. So put that in our calculator. Pi times 12 squared times 24. That ends up giving me 1,857.34, but that's the whole sphere. We only want half of that. So when you're finally done with this, you either need to multiply by a half or divide by two. That's what a lot of people are going to do. They're going to forget that part. So when you divide by two, that gives you 5428.67. That's the area of the cylinder. So that's the area of this cylinder. This is the area of the prism, so the, uh, sorry, the volume, I've been saying area. That's the volume of the cylinder, the half cylinder, that's the volume of the prism. So now all we have to do is add those together. So we end up with 20736 plus 5428.67. So 20736 plus... 5428.67 and they're giving you 26164.67. So that whole thing has a volume of 26164.67 inches cubed. And again, that's what these are. You're just putting that stuff together. So what about this one? What's the volume of the following figure? Uh, so we have a cylinder with a cone on it. Uh, the cylinder since we just did one of these, the volume is pi r squared times the height. Um, so that is pi times the radius. Uh, well, the diameter is 6, so the radius is 3 squared times the height is 50. So that is, plug in your calculator, pi times 3 squared times 50, 1413.72 when you round. Here's the third. Now again, we don't have to divide that one in two because it's not a half a cylinder, it's the whole cylinder. Over here, this is obviously half of a cylinder. This one is obviously a whole cylinder. So now we have to look at the cone. Remember the formula for a cone is pi r squared times h divided by 3. So that's pi times the radius. Well, it's still the same radius. Uh, the height of this one. Oh, geez, this is going to be more complicated than I thought. The height of this one, they give you that this side over here is 5 meters. Um, we want the height of that. 
So might as well. I mean, it, it takes a little bit more time, but we've done this before. To find the actual height then, um, we just have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is 3, and we have 5. So 3 squared plus the height squared is equal to 5 squared. So it's 9 plus h squared is equal to 25. Subtract both sides by 9. h squared is equal to 25 minus 9 is 16. So if you take the square root of both of those, you get h is equal to 4. So my h over here is 4. And that is still all divided by 3. Don't forget about that. That gets me every time. So we have pi times 3 squared times 4 is 113.4. One zero when you round, divided by three. That ends up giving you thirty-seven point seven. So now all I have to do is add those together. So we have one four one three point seven two plus three seven point seven. Add those together. One four five one point four two meters to the third. Again, so don't make it harder than it is. It's the same thing we did earlier. It's just two steps. It's twice as much work, so it is a lot of work, but find the area of the cylinder, find the area of the cone, add those together. So a little bit of extra, and I'm not going to actually solve all this, but what if I wanted to find the surface area of this, what would it be? Now, the reason this is harder and the reason I'm not going to put any of these on the test and I'm not really going to take the time to go over it, um, the reason it's harder is because the surface area, instead of just adding together, it's a little bit complicated because this cone, or sorry, this uh, cylinder, when we find the surface area, it includes everything on the outside, the top, and the bottom. But then if you find the surface area of this cone, it's everything on the outside, and the bottom. Well, if you look at how I colored those in, this circle right here, this bottom of the cylinder and the top of your cone, we counted twice. Well, not only did we count it twice, but we don't have to count it at all because the surface area is the outside. If we were just to spray paint the outside of this, we want to know what that would cover. That's the surface area. And these two circles right here where it overlaps, it doesn't it wouldn't touch that at all. That'd be on the inside. And so to find the surface area, it would totally be doable. We could completely do it. Um, there's several different ways. I would find the area of the cylinder, or sorry, the volume of the cylinder. And then I would subtract the area of the circle. And then on the cone, I would find the volume of the cone. Same thing, I would subtract the area of the circle. Now, there's other ways to do it, but that's just a quick way to do it. And again, I am not going to put any of these on the test at all. I just thought that was something interesting to talk about where with the volume, you can just add it together because we have the volume of the cylinder. Uh, again, you'd fill the cylinder with water. The volume of the cone, fill that with water. What are they total? You'd add those together. Well, with surface area, it's a little bit different because when I stack that cone on the bottom there, it covers up one of those circles on the cylinder. And all of a sudden, that's not on the outside. That's not on the surface. So it's not included in the area. So last but not least, we have a question like this. Um, there's one that's similar to this on the test. That's why I put this on here. Uh, so I have kids, and I always look, I, I always look like to make new toys. I did not word that correctly. Um, so I have kids, and I always look for new co new toys to make them. Um, with stuff around the house. The other day I took a toy tennis ball, I cut it in half and I glued it to the bottom of the tube. Uh, the tube is 10 centimeters long and the diameter of, sorry, and has a diameter of six centimeters. Um, the ball is a hemisphere that has the same diameter as the tube. Now, first off, hemisphere is literally just a half circle. So make sure you know that that word will be on the test in something that's similar to this. Um, so we wanna make sure we know what the hemisphere means. So first step, label the right, well, um, they say that the tube is 10 centimeters long and the diameter of the tube is 6 centimeters and then um, the diameter of the hemisphere is also 6 centimeters. 
If my daughter filled this with water, how much would it hold? Well, again, this is just a composite figure, but it's just similar to what we did earlier with the cylinder where it's only half of a sphere on the bottom. Um, so you have to make sure you remember that. So the volume of the cylinder, the volume is pi r squared times the height. So it's pi times 6 squared times the height. So put that in your calculator. Uh, this ends up being 1130.97 for the cylinder, and that's centimeters cubed. And then for the sphere, you have to remember that it's one half the sphere. So the volume of a sphere is 4 times pi r to the third over 3. And really, we're going to take that answer and divide it by 2. Um, if you want to do it right away, you can make that 3 into a 6, but I think that's a little bit complicated. So if I were you, I would just try to remember to divide by 2 at the end. So if we plug in everything we know, we have 4 pi times the radius is still 6 to the third divided by 3. So type that in. We have 4 times pi times 6 raised to the third. That's 2714 divided by 3 is 904.78 when you round. But don't forget, we want half of that sphere. So this is the whole sphere. We only want half of that. So take that answer then and divide by 2. You end up getting 452.78. As the volume of the half sphere. So now we have the hard work is over. Now we just add those two together. So 1130.97 plus 452.39 is 11, or sorry, just one. You're going to be getting 1583.36. Uh, and that's centimeters to the third. The next one, what's the surface area of the half ball at the bottom? Um, so again, we want the surface area, but again, it's saying it's half of it. Um, so the surface area for a sphere is 4 times pi r squared. So that's 4 pi times 6 squared. That ends up being 452.39. Uh, but again, that is the whole surface area. We want half of that. So that's the whole sphere. So half of the surface area would be 452.39 divided by 2. We end up with 226.19 centimeters squared for that one. And the last one, what if I found a different tube that had a diameter of 4 centimeters and it was 12 centimeters tall. On the end, there's just a flat cap. There's no ball. So it's, this, it's, a, it's another tube, but I didn't put the ball on the end. It's just a normal cylinder. Would it hold more water than the original toy? Well, basically what they're telling you to do is find the volume of this new cylinder that is 12 centimeters tall, has a diameter of 4, which is a radius of 2. Find the volume of that and compare it to your original volume. So we have the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. So this is pi times 2 squared times 12. So for that ends up giving you 150.80. Uh, centimeters cubed. So this is how much volume this cylinder holds. So um, will that hold more or less than the original toy? So we have to go back to see what we found for that one. Um, the original toy was 1583. So I wonder if I did something wrong. That's not even close. So 
so the original one will hold a lot more. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. I can go back and check. Um, but let's, I guess let's think of it a little bit logically. So we have 12, so it's only two more centimeters. Oh, I wonder if this is the one. Yep, that's my downfall. So not to make this a huge mess, but just to change some things up real quick, um, I took, this is the diameter, and I should have taken the radius when I plugged this in. Some of you guys probably realize that. So I know this is going to make your answers a little bit different. Um, but the good news is most of it's very similar. I just did one little thing wrong. It's going to just mess up those answers. This should be a three, and this one should be a three. So if I go back in there, that is, this one is 282.74. Over here, this other one, that then divided by three is 113.10. If we add those together, we end up with 39, sorry, 395. Drop my eraser. 395.84 centimeters cubed. So, sorry, that should have been the answer to that one. That's my bad. My apologies. Again, the good news is all the math, all the steps I showed you were correct. Um, the numbers were just wrong because I messed up that three. Should have been a three, not a six. Um, so, uh, it actually will hold less than our other, oh, sorry, more than still. I thought the other one was 500. This is 395. Um, this one's 150, and it makes sense because the radius, uh, the radius is smaller, and there's also not that cap on the end, so that's going to make it a little bit different. So if you have any questions, make sure you're letting me know. You can always email. You can always ask in class.